Hi everyone, I'm Rinzi and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. Today I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of genre categorizations. This obviously is not going to be like a serious pros and cons list, although I do kind of have a pros and cons list because that's just who I am as a human being, but I do kind of just want to talk about genre in general and I feel like this is a pretty good way to do it. So first off the bat, I think we have to acknowledge that genre is one of those things that is just basically like a marketing term. How things do and do not fit into genres or how things are described generally comes from marketing first in order to help sell books. But I think that even though that might be its original form, I think that even as someone who talks about books on the internet and wants other people to be picking up books, genre can be really helpful in terms of getting other people to pick up books or getting people to not pick up certain books or getting people to just like be kind of interested in certain types of books. So like for me, a pro of genre categorizations is that like I'm a mood reader and so there are times when I want books to fulfill a certain need or do something specific. There are times when I'm really in the mood for a mystery book and I want something with kind of um, maybe neater ending or something like that. Or I'm really in the mood for like a fantasy book or a contemporary book or a romance novel. And in those situations, obviously like genre is great because the things that I'm looking for, like happily ever after endings, I'll turn towards romance books. Or if I'm looking for something that takes me into a world that's not my own, I might go for like a fantasy novel. Um, or if I want something that's very much like my own, I'll go for a contemporary novel or something along those lines. So yeah, like I'm not completely anti-genre. In fact, I lean on genre quite a bit to figure out what I want to be reading or what books I'm in the mood to read or things that I think will be of interest to me, etc. And I think along those same lines, it's a good way to pitch books to other people. If you know someone is a big fan of fantasy books, then you can, you know, recommend certain books to them based on that. Or a really interesting and fun thing I think is when there are writers who write in certain genres and then use the tropes and stereotypes and the preconceived notions about that genre to sort of turn its story on its head and tell something a little bit different and unusual. The sort of flip side or con to that is that there are preconceived notions and expectations when you go into certain books because of the genres that have been associated with them. And I think a lot of the cons that come with genre categorizations come when people only use your genre to describe a book or they only use genre to assume certain things about a book and don't do sort of like broader research or don't look more into the nuances or specifics or details about a book. But also like sometimes genre doesn't really fit certain books. So like an example of that for me was when I was reading Circe. Um, actually, it was when I was talking about Circe for Book Riot last year for the best books that I read um, or they like you know, did the, their best books and I was writing about Circe. And one of the fields in the form was like, what's the genre of your book? And I honestly had no idea how to answer that because I guess it's technically like literary fiction, but I don't really consider literary fiction to be a genre. It's just sort of like a writing style, in my opinion, the same way I don't consider young adult a genre. That's just like the age market or like the targeted age market. So I was like, literary fiction or would it be considered a fantasy book because it's about mythology so that's technically fantasy right it's like how would you categorize Circe if you had to pick a single genre for it I mean I guess like in general it probably just would have been in the like general fiction category if you were looking it up on Amazon maybe maybe I should have looked this up on Amazon first to see how they categorized it or even on Goodreads the tags that are used for these books but yeah this is one of those books where I'm like how is modern retellings or not modern retellings but how are retellings of mythology sort of categorized in my head it, I would think fantasy but I think that if you just describe this as fantasy you're expecting something sp different than if you like didn't really know the synopsis of the book but at the same time like you kind of should know the synopsis of a book before picking it up so I don't think anyone picking up this book would expect what's stereotypically thought of as fantasy books in this story. And then the other side of that is sort of like when people are talking about books and they use certain genre specifications and it sort of changes people's notions of what that book is going to be. Um, so an example that recently happened to me is with A Natural History of Dragons. This is a 
fantasy book technically because it deals with dragons but this isn't really written like a fantasy book um i think it this also had to do with kind of the marketing behind it and i will say overall i enjoyed this book but i do plan on like continuing on with the series the subtitle is a memoir by lady trent so the story is written like a memoir of this woman named lady trent who was like a dragon naturalist so she basically studied and wrote about dragons so there's that element of it where it's written kind of like a memoir um, but it's also written kind of like a natural history book because dragons are considered like normal animals or like another type of animal in this world uh, so there's that element of it and then the way the story goes like the last half to a third of the book is kind of more like a mystery than anything else and it doesn't have anything to do at all with dragons um which i know a lot of people found really disappointing in this book based on like the goodreads reviews that i saw and stuff like that and it's completely understandable because of the genre categorization but also like the title uh the fact that there's like barely any dragons in a significant portion of the book seems a little weird but yeah i think that if you had gone into this book not knowing too much about it besides what's written on the blurb and knowing that it's a fantasy book you would be a little bit disappointed because there isn't that much about the dragons themselves in this book and i think that again it comes down to like marketing and the fact that people who are in book marketing are just trying to get you to pick up a book they don't necessarily go for like the most accurate representation of a book because a book like this is extremely like nuanced and layered and requires a lot more work and a lot more words and a lot more description than you necessarily get on a blurb or like on the summaries that you see on Amazon and Goodreads. Another example of sort of a con with genre is when you are going into a book knowing that it's had conflicted genre descriptions to it and you don't really know what to expect or if it's the book that you want to read and especially for me as a mood reader I have a little bit of a hard time with it. A recent example of a book that I want to read but I haven't picked up yet partially because I can't completely figure out if I've been in the mood for it yet um, is The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins. This is a pretty new release. It came out earlier this year and it's a book that I've seen described as a mystery but I don't think it's actually a mystery. I think it's also been described as historical fiction and that's basically like what it falls into. It takes place in the 1800s and you are following this character named Franny Langton who uh, was born in Jamaica. She was a former slave and she gets taken in uh, by her owners as a worker and she ends up killing her owners um, and so I think the mystery genre gets thrown around a bit just because there is this element of did she didn't she I believe in this book again I haven't read it yet so I could be inaccurate on that uh, but that's the way that people talk about it but I think that it's actually just like a historical fiction book and talking about her life and so it isn't really a mystery and I find that like with mysteries specifically a lot of books get described as mystery books just because there might be like this slight element of a mystery to them but I also think you can make the argument that almost every book could be a mystery book then because there always is a question that you are trying to answer with a, like 80 to 90 percent of books it feels like so yeah I think that this is one of those books where I'm like oh this would be a really great book to pick up but I don't necessarily know what this book is going to give me so as a mood reader I've like basically just passed it over for other things that I know will provide me with certain feelings like other mystery books or other historical fiction books but again that just might be my own sort of relationship with books getting in my own way of me picking up a potentially good book. So yeah I feel like genre in that sense kind of hinders my reading life a little bit just because if I can't figure out the genre of a book I have a hard time knowing if I'm in the mood for a book but sometimes I do just want something that I know nothing about and so then I will pick up something like Confessions of Franny Langton because i won't have any real idea of what it's going to give me and so I'll just be open to it and I guess that's probably how I should approach every book but that's not really how I approach every book. Sometimes I really do want books to provide specific feelings or ideas or worlds or whatever for me and so I use genre to help me sort of narrow that down. So yeah this is kind of an open-ended discussion. I want to you guys to think about this a little bit let me know down in the comments below uh, what your sort of relationship is with genre whether you enjoy it or not how you use it um, if it impacts your reading life at all am I just overthinking things probably but <laughs> I think that some of you guys might be thinking about this as well so let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys next week bye